What's up guys, Boss here, and in today's video we're going to be playing some Lumber Loon Freeze. It is back in the meta and pretty much stronger than it's been in a very long time. I believe this deck finished second in the world last season by Anaban, and it is so good with the Monk and the Phoenix, which as I'm sure you guys know, are so strong right now in the game the two best cards in the game by far you got the e-drag though which is also very valuable on defense and if your opponent doesn't have something like a lightning it just stays on the board for such a long time giving you so much value the tornado pairs really nicely with the electro drag also the freeze so you can kind of clump things together and it also pairs pretty nicely i think with the monk and the phoenix because the phoenix kind of has death damage too which deals some damage and then the bar barrel before we head in the first game if you guys would like to support me you can use my creator code boss in a super Soul game so i was probably going to play some path of legends here you guys can see i'm already in league four so we're already almost halfway through here because there's 10 leagues and i wanted to ask you guys do you guys want me to make a video on trophy road because as you can see i haven't played a single trophy road match not even joking like i haven't played one since the update drop because for players like me i think path of legends is kind of more like definitely competitive like i feel like getting 7500 it's not even really that to me at least it's not really that important because once you get 7500 you you kind of it doesn't even reset so you kind of just stay at 7500 forever but maybe it's worth getting to it just to like, kind of like get it over with and then I can just stay there or whatever because when you get to 7500 you can't get any higher it doesn't let you but you also you can't really drop under it because I think if you lose you don't even lose trophies so it's very very weird but if you guys want me to make a video basically um I don't know like getting 7500 maybe you guys would be interested in that i guess let me know if you guys would like to see that or not or if you guys want to just see me keep playing um path of legends i guess it's up to you guys because you know path of legends obviously the ranked mode the getting 7500 that's kind of casual and i feel like at, it's gonna almost get to the point where pretty much anyone in the game could get 7500 um, but what's also very interesting is getting ultimate champion should be very easy as well. And I think majority of players in the game are going to be able to achieve that. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. I mean, it's a little controversial. I think a lot of good players think it's bad because now it doesn't mean as much getting ultimate champion since there's going to be like 10 times the amount of people able to achieve it. Maybe even down the road, we realize it's going to be more like 100 times because obviously um, there's... Uh, way more days in this season whereas in the last season it was kind of like a teaser and there was only like y you know two weeks and there were already so many people to get ultimate champion so i don't know but i guess time will tell we'll see what happens this season and we should be able to defend this paco with just the phoenix here uh the only thing is this bandit's going to get a solid amount of damage so i'm probably just going to go for Actually, I don't even know if that's going to activate because it's going to, yeah, lost too much health. So I had a bad start this match. We can definitely come back, though. I think single is a good advantage for the P.E.K.K.A. player. P.E.K.K.A. tends to be pretty good in single. And then as the match goes on, it kind of gets easier for the other deck lots of times. So I'm still undefeated this season. I haven't lost yet in the... Path of Legends mode, and I'd like to keep it that way as long as possible to get the best possible win rate, because that of course puts you in a better position when you end up reaching Ultimate Champion. So I'm going to go in here because he went for the P.E.K.K.A. in the other lane, and the Phoenix is pretty much enough to deal with the P.E.K.K.A., I think. We might maybe need to go for like a NATO, but besides that it should be fine, and then we can just go for an E-Drag to defend this gonna be a really nice counter Ooh, this is gonna be even better look at this freeze we can freeze literally everything and then we should be able to get the lumberjack down in time nice for that bandit oh and look at the phoenix in the other lane he completely forgot about that look at how much damage we got that's really solid so yeah at this point we just need to just defend i'm even gonna overcommit just to make sure there's no way that connects because you might zap or something or try to get through See if we want to go for a balloon here. I think we want to go balloon in the opposite lane. Just go for lumber loon push. There should be no way for him to stop this. Yeah, we can just freeze the tower. And I think even if he goes in for an E-Wiz, it's not going to be enough to stop the balloon because it's raged up. And there we go. That is going to be GG. We're going to win this match here. I got a little worried for a second. I thought maybe we were going to get our very first loss in Path of Legends 
for the season. And yeah, so yeah, still have a 100% win rate. I'm curious how long I could keep that 100% win rate. Maybe, I don't know. My prediction is I'm likely going to get my first loss. If I don't in this league, it's probably likely going to happen in league five or six because it's really hard to go undefeated. I think there's only one person to get to ultimate champion having a 100% win rate. That was actually Sandbox. I believe he was one of the people I played against in my last video, actually. He's, um insanely good and i believe yeah he was the first person to get it the longer the season goes on for the easier it is to get it i think the very first or second day it's like impossible to get a 100 win rate because pretty much you're only gonna face really really good players in league 9 and 10 because everyone like all the good players are trying to compete and be the very first person to reach ultimate champion so there are already some people inside of ultimate champion but the highest win rate possible getting it in the first couple of days is probably like 80% or 75, which is still incredible, don't get me wrong. But if you want to try to get that 100%, you probably, probably, you know, has to be done after about a week. Okay, so that might have been kind of a bad tornado on... Or, um, yeah, bad tornado on my end because it ended up pulling the Axie and, like, lining it up. That'll actually... I was going to say that would have hatched if he didn't play the Ice Wiz, but obviously since he did end up using it, it does prevent it from hatching, so that was good by him. We don't have a lot of answers to the Graveyard. But E-Drag does decent against it, I suppose. Barbaro, kind of. Not really, but I guess it... It's, you know, good enough. Alright, we're cool here. That's defended. Let's see what we want to do. Maybe hit him up with a Lumberloom push in the opposite lane. He activates the King Tower, but... Uh, I'm going to freeze. Oh, wow. He didn't NATO to the king. Oh, he's got a fireball? Wow. That's um kind of unfortunate. So he's got a ton, and I mean a ton of air counters. He's got E-Wiz. He's got Ice Wiz. He's got fireball, tornado. Really good amount of air counters to our balloon, which is not what we want to see, obviously. Going to Phoenix here. Very interesting that he decided to go in the right lane to pressure, even though he got all that damage in the other lane. Can't at all say I agree with that play. I'm going to NATO the... Oh, I just missed it. Uh, that's really bad. If I ended up getting that NATO and not misplaying it, we would have been able to pull that XE in and kill it quickly and then counter push. Okay, that was a horrible fireball. I don't know what he was thinking there. I, I mean, it definitely wasn't a misclick. Like, he probably meant to do it, but I'm just confused as to why he would want to do that. I guess that's... This time, trying to not miss the tornado. I want to pull that E-Wiz in to kill it. Only problem is that stupid... XE. Like, the XE is one of the best cards in the game right now, which is crazy because it used to not be... Wow, this guy's just literally going for... Wow. Monk is going to get a lot of value here. As long as it can actually kill the... Yeah, nice, it did. Okay. I'm going to freeze this here. I'm really trying to get the balloon to the tower, hopefully. He's going to NATO it back, though. Yeah, it's very weird. He's going for, like, Fireball Cycle on my tower instead of going for Graveyards. Yeah, look at how many air counters he has. This is actually ridiculous. We got the death damage, though. Wow, he's spell cycling. What the heck? Oh, nice. We got the E-Drag to chain. That was huge. I think we're going to win this, despite this, like, pretty awful matchup. I mean, I'm not saying this is, like, 
is certainly not an impossible matchup because we just won, but this is like a really bad matchup. He has so many air counters. Like, look at his deck. He's got, um... Show you guys after this game. He's got Executioner. He's got E-Wiz. He's got Ice Wizard. He's got Tornado. Half of his deck is... Like, he's never gonna have a rotation where he doesn't have a counter to the Balloon and Cycle. That's wild. Look at that. Exe, E-Wiz, Ice Wizard. Those things alone... And then along with that, the tornado and the fireball. <laughs> he just started fireball cycling my tower, and yet doing that multiple times, he was still able to defend. That shows you how hard it was. The only reason why he lost, I think, is he didn't tornado the balloon to the king tower. I think if he activated the king tower, he for sure would have won that. Um, but yeah, either way, I'll take it, man. That was probably the roughest match i've gotten so far kind of like the closest one to where it's like i almost lost you know is this really pekka again why are we playing against pekka three times in a row um it looks like it's not but when i saw the battle ram i was like yeah well looks like it could be pop the ability just in time look at that for one elixir we pretty much Prevented the cannon cart from being a threat, and it also distracted the bandit so much. So broken, for sure the best champion in the game right now, without a doubt. In fact, the monk is so good that the archer queen, I don't even think is the second best champion in the game anymore, because the monk counters the archer queen, because anything that's like a ranged attacker, the monk does so good against, because I don't want to balloon, because he hasn't even used an air counter yet, so I know he's got air counters and cycle my guess is probably like an e-wiz maybe he's got a mother witch but point being until he has those Ooh, that's very aggressive the battle ram was good but that cannon cart was not a good play in my opinion was definitely aggressive and he's got e-wiz okay it's gonna be a pretty solid counter to uh i'm thinking about Maybe we should go Balloon here, and then go for, like, a Lumberjack in front. He was out of hand. It's a good air counter, obviously, so maybe he doesn't have... Okay, yeah, he's got a Magic Archer. That's not really... I guess we can activate the King Tower. Suppose it's worth it. And then we'll just ignore the Magic Archer. You might be wondering why am I ignoring it. Main reason why is because in this type of matchup, since he doesn't have a big spell, it doesn't really matter if he's in the lead a little bit, because it's so easy for me to come back, and he doesn't have a lot of, um, like, defenses against my balloon either, so, like, I'm very, very confident I'm gonna be able to, you know, take the damage lead pretty much right now, actually. Even with that snowball, like, I could just freeze here. I don't know if we're going to get two balloon hits, but we're definitely... Oh, yeah, we are going to get two. Wait, we might even get a third. Oh, wow. Nah. Barely don't get it, but it's a lot of damage. We just need one more balloon hit, and we win this game. The barbell doesn't even help him because the E-Drag just changed it all anyway. It actually did end up helping a little bit. I take that back. Don't matter, though. Don't matter. At least I don't think it does. Maybe we pop the ability here, just to get some chip damage on the tower. Go for a freeze. Should be A-OK -okay here, especially since we do have the um, King Tower activated as an extra. Alright, I guess I'm gonna do this. This is gonna save us. This For one elixir, it's, we're basically gonna... <laughs> Save the tower. <laughs> oh man, the monk is so broken. This is like actually crazy. We're gonna go for a tornado. Oh wow, I didn't even... The e was died, I didn't even realize that. That's GG. Even if the balloon doesn't get a connection, it'll put us in tornado freeze range. But yeah, he can't stop it. That's GG. Another solid win there. Yeah, the monk is just so broken. Like, if it... Honestly, I can't say if it weren't for the monk, I would have lost that because the if I, if Lumberloon typically has Bowler, if I had Bowler, it would have been amazing in that matchup. It's so good. Bowler's so good against, like, Battle Ram. It's kind of similar to the monk, actually. It pushes things back, but the only difference is the monk pushes everything back. So we're going to monk here. We're going to use the ability. 
So this way, his monk comes on my side of the map. I'd like to do this a lot, actually. It's It kind of seems like a weird play, but it, it's it's pretty good because it, it, helps, it like helps you defend, if that makes sense. Um, okay, he's going to use the ability. It, it doesn't even really matter that much, though, because this counter push is going to be pretty much impossible for him to defend. That's why I kind of didn't defend any more than I did there, because I'm more focused on this. He's very lucky that I didn't activate that monk ability a little quicker, because had I done that, it pretty much would have been GG, because it would have reflected the fireball back, but it's actually GG anyway. I shouldn't even been worried. Yeah, this is pretty much already GG. We won. And those... Yeah, I'm actually gonna go Lumberjack here. Oh, yeah, he... Alright, he had a little bit more elixir than I thought he did, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We're in an amazing position. Pretty solid matchup, because our E-Drag gets infinite value on our side of the map. Whereas if the RG player has a Lightning, then it's a good matchup for the RG player. But yeah, when I was running RG Fireball, this was a matchup I was struggling with. This deck I'm using here, I struggled against it, I mean. But now the tables have turned and we're using it. And so it's a pretty good matchup for us. The Monk pretty much fully counters the RG by itself. I think it should fully counter for sure with the Phoenix. Yeah, it does. It's such an incredible counter to the RG. And I didn't even know this, but did you know you can reflect the RG projectiles with the monk what i mean is if you activate the ability and it's lined up in front of the rg it'll um reflect the rg's projectiles it's probably not worth doing though because you're better off having it push the rg but maybe there's some situations where you would want to do that i'm not really sure but uh anyway i'm gonna go for a bar barrel here oh nice he literally played <laughs> okay he's probably gonna go for a hunter yeah there it is yeah, he's definitely not playing that well, but I think it's a good matchup for us anyway. It's like, even if it was a pretty good player, we... I was <laughs> I was trying to freeze because I wanted to get the egg to hatch. I'm not even really playing that good right now, but we have such a huge lead, so it doesn't really matter that much anyway. I kind of go on, like, auto autopilot when I'm against someone who's, like, not really that good, and the match is, like, practically over. I think that's understandable. But uh, anyway, that's going to be GG, so yeah, pretty good matchup, and he also didn't play that well, he was way too aggressive early on, and he just simply wasn't able to defend the counter push, as you could tell, we pretty much took his whole tower in the first push, and yeah, that that's what this deck does pretty good at, because I would consider this deck kind of like a beatdown deck, or maybe it's control, but either way, it's definitely one where you win games in one push. So I guess we'll go for one more match here. We already won four. So let's try to, again, go undefeated this video like I did last video. And we're still at a 100% win rate for the season. So that's pretty dope, I guess. So let's see what this guy's got here. We um, He's going to go for a healer. So we'll go for a monk. So maybe he's running Elixir Golem. Yeah, maybe. Right, maybe. So, oh nice. Yeah, this is an incredible freeze value here for us. Just gonna pop a barbell here just to help kill the blobs. And... We need to get rid of that healer. If that egg doesn't... Okay, yeah, we're fine. I was gonna say if that egg hatched, we would have had a problem. Hmm, maybe go Lumberjack here. His NATO is out of cycle. Balloon could have been a good idea as well. Oh, if that egg hatches, we'll be... Ah, yeah, but he played his own Phoenix. That's unfortunate. Hmm. Yeah, not really the best start. Hmm. I don't know. This is not looking good at all, actually. We certainly can come back, but we have to try to defend his um, Elixir Golem push a bit better the next time. We're going to do this. To have this stuff come on our side of the map, ideally. I feel like that was a mistake, not going for an Elixir Golem in front of that. 
Yeah, I think it was, although... Oh, that's so unlucky. I'm gonna go in here, though, for sure. Get a freeze down. Would have been nice if the Lumberjack stayed up. Actually, it might be a good thing, because now it's raged up. Oh, wow, he's not gonna go for Tornado to activate. Okay, nice, the Phoenix got pulled back. That's really, really good. Let's go. Just go for a bar barrel here. Monk! Come on, freeze. Uh, this is... I, we're okay, I think, actually. I can NATO this back. We have so much stuff down. Yeah, yeah, we're chilling. And even if he took my tower, look at this counter push, man. Oh my god, this is, like, actually ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, good luck defending this, buddy. Like, even if he took my tower, like, let's say he's got a fireball or something... Good luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So that's going to be it for the video. We're going to go undefeated two videos in a row. We have yet to lose a game. Could I potentially be the first person to have a 100% win? Nah, probably not. I mean, like, let's be honest. It's very unlikely. All right, guys. So that is going to be it for the video. I hope you guys did end up enjoying it. As I said, Lumberloon, definitely one of the strongest stacks in the meta right now. I personally think it's very fun to play too, so make sure to, you know, give it a try if you're looking for a very strong deck and a fun deck to play. I know a lot of people think Lumberloon is really toxic. I remember got a lot of hate when it won the um, World Finals last year by Mugi, but can't deny that it is a fun deck to play when you're the one using it. Anyway, thanks again, until next time, guys.